All right, let's see if we are live. There we go. We have sound and picture and everything, I think. Let's see if anyone's in here yet. Uh, we got Balbino Simo. I, I'm sorry, I have no idea <laughs> how to pronounce your name. But welcome, welcome, it's good to see you. Uh, hey, as you guys are coming in, do me a favor, tell me your name and just say where you're from and I'll, I'll shout you out as, uh, as you guys are popping in. But it's fantastic to see you all. There is my darling wife, Sarah. Hey, darling. Matt Ruderman. Ruderman or Rutterman? Sorry. Uh, awesome bass, great tone. Dude, thank you so much, man. This is uh, honestly one of my favorite instruments in the world. It's a uh, it's a Guild Starfire. I'm pretty sure it's a 66, 64, 60 something. Um, and uh, Justin Melville Johnson turned me on to these basses. I'll, I'll do the close up over here. Uh, looks like a, like a Gibson 335 kind of body, cherry red with the, you know, it was white. Uh, trim now it's really really yellow <laughs> you know got the classic guild logo up at the top but um yeah i picked this thing up for like 400 bucks it was missing the pickup the original hagstrom pickup and the neck has definitely had some work done to it i'm, I'm sure it snapped in half <laughs> at some point um, but uh yeah this is one of the coolest bases i don't get to use it all the time and you'll kind of see why for the for the song that i'm recording today um, so like I said, I, it, it doesn't get used all the time because it has this very I want to say it sounds like a toy it, 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 for how big the body is it doesn't have a lot of low end it's only got a neck pickup so it's a pretty muddy sound but for that like Paul McCartney um, I don't know, Jack Bruce, just like that old school 1960s rock and roll bass sound. You know, like, so anytime I'm in the studio, I always bring this bass with me. Um, and another character base, I, I call these character bases. I had uh, Warren Hewitt on my channel last year at some point. I forget what he called them. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. He called them character bases. I call them wild card bases, <laughs> whatever it is. It's just like, it's not going to work most of the time, but when it does, it does, and, and you'll find out why today. Hey, let's see who else is over here. By the way, if you keep seeing me turn this direction, it's because this is where the screen is, <laughs> so I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Bass Players Anonymous coming from sunny Des Moines. I'm pretty sure it's not sunny. <laughs> I've been there around this time of year. Uh, Fletch coming from London, UK. Hey, yo. Uh, Victor from Argentina. Welcome. You know what I should do? I should learn. I just had a random thought. What I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to learn how to say hello and welcome in as many different languages as I can. And then I'm going to say them to you. I pointed over here. That, has no, that means nothing to you. Uh, but when you guys uh, tell me where you're from, I'm going to say hello to you in the language native to your country because most of you aren't from the States. That sounds like a pretty big, uh, mm, 
I might not be able to do that. I may not be able to say hello in every language, but I'm going to try, and y'all can laugh at me. Um, catharsis. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't recognize that word. Do you ever do that? You look at something, you're like, because? Because? Why didn't I recognize that? Uh, catharsis says, hey, how's it going, brother? It is going very well. Very well. Very good. I'm not sure what's proper. Uh, Matt Ruderman says, yeah, like roto Ruder in New York. Russell, hey, welcome, man, from across the pond. Uh, who else we got here? Jamie Lewis, support. That's me, not me. If you see that one, that's my good friend, Ben Tessman. He's going to help me out if I start saying stupid things or if I'm posting links that don't go anywhere, he's going to fix it. Uh, who else we got here? Russell says, it sounds like a brighter upright. Yeah, you know what? I always leave the tone knob all the way up. Because again, for the semi-hollow sound, I think um, it's supposed to sound like a toy. It's the reason why I paid like four or 500 bucks for this thing. Because normally, if you're buying a vintage semi-hollow Starfire or a Gibson EB2, dude, those things are like two grand, two grand and up. So I, w I looked for one that was beat up, <laughs> missing a pickup, and... Um, I just, uh, it, it sounds very toyish. If you've ever played a Hofner before, I mean, they're junk, they're dookie instruments. And if I roll the tone knob down, like all the way down, it's a little more usable. And then yeah, as I bring my right hand, uh, you know, like closer to the neck. that sound okay so if I touch my bass with hold on <laughs> it's called they don't make them like they used to on purpose I don't know if you guys were hearing that but it was making a making a pretty funny sound um, I don't know why I brought that up oh so like I said Justin Melville Johnson turned me on to this bass and he said specifically when I play semi hollows I kind of want to sound like junk I want to have like a toy I just picked it up from the pawn shop. It barely stays in tune, and that's kind of the point of a, a character base. It has character. Uh, the Squire Bronco is very similar to like the old Fender, uh, not Music Master, Jazz Master? I think it is a Music Master. Mustang bass, Gibson Grabber. These are just instruments that don't, I don't think sound very good as a bass, but as a one-off thing that you could just kind of bring in for this song, like I'm gonna do today. Um, you'll see why. Oh shoot! Hold on, I missed a bunch of them. Let me uh, let me let me back up here in the chat. Oh no, it sounds like an upright. Manuel retracted a message. Must have been mean. No, probably wasn't. Uh, old school from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hey, welcome, Orange County. I was just there a couple weeks ago for the Nam show. Uh, New York City, how we doing? <laughs> if you're asking me how we're doing, I'm doing good. If you're asking New York City how they're doing, um. If you're from New York, chime in. Uh, do an Irish top of the morning. <laughs> you know what? I had red hair at one point, um, and I think I might be a little bit Irish, but an Irish accent I definitely do not have, but I'll work on it for you, Russell, I promise. Um, Hafiz, hi, you still remember me? Basis from Malaysia. Of course I remember you and all people ever. Manuel says, good. I don't know why I'm just reading your responses. You can all see them. They're they're on the screen. Uh, New Hampshire. Awesome. Welcome, David. Nigeria, Manuel. Dang. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Russell says his birthday was a couple weeks ago. Happy birthday. I remember singing it to you in the worst way possible. <laughs> a killer bass for 75 pounds. That's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, my brother says it has a Tesla coil. That's my secret, a Tesla coil. Oh, wait, 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 like, are you talking about, like, from Command and Conquer? <laughs> like, the Tesla coils that you would, I don't know, never mind. It is my secret. And welcome from Italy. Hey, if you don't uh, see already, there's a little button here that says, um, number one, please give this video a thumbs up. That just kind of helps with the rankings. And obviously, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, you know what? Let's just jump right in. Uh, I don't want to say I don't have too much uh, time this morning, but I want to try to keep this under an hour. Um, 
<laughs> so let's see. Hold on. David says, uh, when trying to get an upright sound from a solid body, how much do you think uh, the approach to the line affects the sound? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, okay, let me think of how to put this. I'll answer this question. Um, and, and by the way, everything I'm going to do today, um, I don't want you guys to just be a fly on the wall, you know, like just watching me work. I'm going to kind of show you my process for how I record music. Um, this today was a song that was sent to me um, by, by two people that I'm working with, and, and we might turn this into a video at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to explain why I'm doing it. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to, to stop me. Put, put a question over there. I'm going to constantly come back to this ch chat stream over here, and I'll be able to look and, and, and help you out if I can. Um, so was I, oh, you were asking about the uh, getting upright sound. Part of it isn't just rolling off your tone knob and bringing your hand up to the neck and just playing a major scale and quarter notes. I mean, that's a lot of it. One of the uh, note choices obviously make a big difference. Um, if you're trying to sound like an upright and you're going... That's clearly a rock and roll bass line. <laughs> so you're not going to get the upright sound there. But the hardest thing about, um, about mimicking the sound of a double bass on a bass guitar, semi-hollow, or solid body is the decay. Okay, because if you've ever played a double bass before, if I go and play G, it doesn't ring out for that long. Okay, the flat long strings help out a lot. This bass does have flats on it. I'm actually not sure what brand uh, or how old. They're, I think they're about 10 years old. I've had this bass at least that long, and I've never changed the strings on it. Uh, so the flat long strings definitely help out, but it's the... Um, the taper of the note on a bass, uh, on a double bass, when you play it, boom, like that's it. Unless you're drawing it with a bow, you can't really sustain the note. You'll never get that sound on a double bass. It'll go boom, and then it'll disappear. So I think the hardest thing to do is to kind of, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but with my left hand, like I'm playing an A, and then I'm laying my fingers over the top to get the note to, 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 to taper the decay. So it's boom. And I'm even like doing this sometimes, like just playing with one finger and moving uh, my whole hand around. I'm not doing a good job right now. But you can see how the way the notes are sustaining, already it doesn't sound like an upright bass. And that's kind of my biggest problem with electric upright basses, the ones that are just a stick neck and there's no body to it, um, is they just sound like amplified bass guitars <laughs> that are just really, really big, you know? So, excuse me, um, th th that's the hardest part of sounding like an upright. So if you do all the things right, Like that doesn't sound like a double bass because it's da 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 da. It's too consistent. Has to have some boom boom boom. Like the notes have to taper off. And the way you would do that is with your left hand or with your right hand or with your palm. It's one of those things where like trying to sound like an upright, sure, yeah, you could do all those things, but the only way to do it actually, uh, it's just to go buy an upright. <laughs> That's the only way to seal the deal. I'm just going to take a look at the chat stream really quick, and then we'll start recording this song. All right, my brother and my wife are talking, blah, 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 blah. Um, old School RC says, can you give a slap bass tone on this guitar? Not really. Part of the problem is this is a 30, I think this is a 31 or 33, 30 something scale. So it's smaller and also the strings are really close so I can't get my, my fingers on there. This probably sounds pretty nasty. <laughs> Again, that's the flat wound strings 
the super deadness it's kind of the exact opposite of what you would want if you were slapping so old school the short answer is no <laughs> not really uh g brant says is that a fretless starfire nope nope this one's definitely got frets on it um but i think they did come in fretless at one point i don't know all right um also which flats i i don't know I don't know. Uh, these are about 10. You can see they're fraying apart at the ends. These are about 10 years old at least. Uh, so I really don't know what I was using back then. They're definitely not GHS. Hey, speaking of which, I do need to say a big thank you to GHS Strings for sponsoring this podcast. They do make an excellent set of flat wound strings, speaking of which, um, called Precision Flats. Precision Flats. I have a... I can't reach it, but there's a base just over there, out of my reach, um, that has those strings on it. Um, but also the bass boomers, that's what's on most of my basses. Fantastic strings, so make sure you go check them out at ghsstrings.com, and be sure to tell them that Jamie sent you. Hold on, I'm looking for a button, which one is it? It's not that one. Give me a second, I'm getting back to this. All right, so, here we are over in Studio One, I think. Yes, we are, okay. Uh, this is the song that I need to track today, um, so here's what I'm going to do first. I'm just going to listen to it. I haven't uh, heard this song yet, don't really know what I'm going to do on it. I pulled it up and uh, gave myself a starting point, point, and here it is. So the first thing we're going to do is just listen to it together for the first time, um, and I'm just going to kind of make some mental notes. It's a short song. So I'm not going to get out the pen and pen paper and, and transcribe uh, anything like that. I really don't think I need to. Um, so let's just have a listen. Yeah, here we go. Uh, and do me a favor. I'm going to come check the chat stream in a second. Let me know if you guys can hear this. Um, also, you know, here's the bass. Here's my voice. And in a second, you'll hear the track. Let me know if anything's too quiet or too loud. I really have no idea because what I'm hearing is a little bit different than you guys. So let's check this out. So that is step one. Listen to the song and get a feel for it. Now, I did listen to this last night. It's the reason why I chose this bass. This isn't one. Oh, let me back up for a second. I don't know if you can see this, but the title over here of this song is called Hats Off to Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page is the guitarist in a band called Led Zeppelin. And actually, uh, I, I know for a fact the drummer on this project Shit, I forget his name, but I know he plays drums in the band Led Zepp again, which if you're here on the West Coast, um, they're like the biggest Zeppelin tribute band. If you're not here in the United States, here's the thing. Tribute bands are really big right now. So they'll have, like, they're a four-piece. They dress like Zeppelin. They play immaculate covers. The, the whole entire show is a Zeppelin tribute show, and they're, they're one of the best um, on this side of the country. So... In case you guys didn't know. So this song's called Hats Off to Jimmy Page, which means I'm going to try to do a hats off to John Paul Jones. 
Why not keep it in the family? Now, the reason why I said that is because JPJ did not play a Guild Starfire. Um, he played a J bass, uh, notably, and uh, I don't know, several different other instruments. But this, uh, this bass definitely fits the, the era, uh, late 60s, early 70s. Um, and and uh, Jack Cassidy, Jack Cassidy has a, a signature Epiphone that's very similar to this bass. And a lot of guys, uh, um, well, Airplane, uh, Jefferson Starship, uh, you definitely heard this in, in that like 60s jam rock um, those those types of genres. So even though this isn't a John Paul Jones bass, at least I don't think he ever played this instrument. I think it's gonna do um, it's gonna do justice. So that's the reason why I chose this instrument. Why is that not going back? Hold on. Okay, there we go. Um, and so yeah, my goal number one is to stay out of the way, but also to channel my inner John Paul Jones. Um, now, on on listening to this just now. One thing that's stepping out, number one, is the downbeat's hard to find. Because of uh, the way the guitar player's really making those upbeats kind of sound like downbeats. It kind of sounds like it's a pickup and then... All right, you can see I was off. So that's one thing, that's gonna be tricky. Um, I've gotta hear his very first note is the downbeat. He didn't send me a click file or a tempo, so I just kind of got to go off my own uh, internal clock. And I'm also noticing how in this song, the phrases are, they're four bar phrases in groups of three, which is interesting. I don't know if that's a Jimmy Page thing. I'm just kind of, again, I'm trying to make mental notes here. So it's not going to go, roses are red, violets are blue, da 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 da, and da 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 da, right? That was a like, a, uh, like if each of these was four bars, it's not gonna be four of them, it's gonna be three of them. The roses are red, violets are blue, da 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 da. Roses are red, violets are blue, da, you, you know what I mean? Um, every section is four bars at a time, three of those and then the next section. So 12 bars and then the next section, 12 bars and then the next section, which is common in 12 bar blues, which this composition definitely is not. Um, so mental note there, um, and I'm hearing sections at the beginning, uh, when the drums come in, right? So there's that right there, 12 bars of that. And then he changes the riff again. And then we get into that riff. So. I basically just kind of block the song into here's one section, here's another section, here's another section, and then we're gonna have the outro. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of play through it and see what I come up with. Normally I would start recording at this point. Here's the thing. This is not gonna be a normal recording session and the reason is because um, I'm actually filming myself playing this. Uh, the, 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 the composers asked me to, to perform this and film myself playing it because uh, the drummer and the guitarist, they did the same exact thing. And they're gonna take all three of them, put together, not just have a song out of it, but also a video of us all performing it, albeit in our separate studios. I believe the guitar player's in Nashville, the drummer's back in Los Angeles, I'm here in Las Vegas. Um, so normally, I would just start recording off the top just in case I get something, uh, but I can't use it even if I did because we're not gonna, I'm not gonna be doing any punching in. Uh, it's gotta be one solid playthrough because it has to, to line up with the video. Um, before we do anything else, I'm just gonna come over here to the chat stream and see if you guys have any questions at all. Uh, okay, voice, voice, uh, no, no, sounds like Mumford gone country. Yeah, kind of. Um, Share any info about the musicians. I just kind of did that. <laughs> so, okay, cool. All right, so let's play through this thing. Uh, I want to listen to that intro one more time. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to channel my inner John Paul Jones by ripping off, uh, 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 what song is this? Ramble on, that's, <laughs> how do you get all 
all the way to the riff to, to figure out Ram Along. Uh, I'm going to try to throw that in there somehow. Again, the song's called Hats Off to Jimmy Page. Uh, the drummer's playing a very Bonham-esque uh, drum groove, and it, the drums even sound like Bonham. So I really do want to um, pay homage without stealing. So let's see if I can do that. <laughs> Um, you know, hold on one second. I'm going to bring the angle over to this one. And I don't exactly like... Okay, so I'm going to change the riff a little bit. Something like that. Let me try it again. Shoot, I should have looked up here to see where it was. Um, things are getting simple when the drums come in. And I think that's the right thing to do, even though um, it would probably be better to have a little bit more movement there. I'm going to leave room for the guitars, because I know these guitars are scratch, so he's probably going to do something, add something in there um, to kind of fill it out a little bit. I'm going to intentionally leave some space here, because uh, that's what... A bass would do. That's what John Paul Jones would do in this case. He'd, he'd leave a little bit of room. Um, and I'm still not. I think that's our intro riff. Hold on. Let's try that again. this country by doing this. That what I want to do. I'm going to pause right there because uh, that's another thing that I do quite often is uh, you can see I spent a lot of time trying to get that intro riff and I brought it back. I brought it back from the beginning just to kind of remind you like, oh yeah, this is a thing. I put it at the transition into uh, when it went. So anyways, all that to say like mental note when you're tracking and you come up with a cool riff or, or, or lick or groove or whatever it is. Press save on that because coming back to it is, is a really cool way to remind the listener like, oh, remember this cool thing you, you, you heard a second ago? Bam, well, here it is again. And I'm using it in a very similar way to transition to whatever, you know, whatever is coming next. Um, so always, always keep that in mind. Uh, let's get answer a couple more of these questions. Let's take a look. Ramble on. Yep, 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 yep. I miss a little of the stream. Did you talk about what you are using to record? Um, yeah, and I'll come back at the end because one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to process the bass with, with plugins and give the artist a few different sounds. So uh, I'll talk about the signal chain towards the end because to be honest, I'm, I'm probably almost done with this. Um, Matt says also, did the band send you a chart? No. No. Um, and to be honest, that costs extra if they don't send me a chart. When people ask, like, how much does it cost to to track a song, um, I have different rates for, well, is it one tune or is it five or is it 10? And then another thing that affects the rate is do you have charts? And I don't mean cowboy charts like 
where you see lyrics and a letter written on top. Like, no, are there pushes? Are there hits? Are there, is there a specific line you want me to play? If it's not charted out, that means I have to make one, and that costs you extra. So remember that. But, but I always give them, I'll email them the PDF file afterwards so they have the chart, so it's like they're buying their own sheet music. Really, it's just a, a way to look, make me look good. <laughs> and so hopefully they'll ask me back because uh, I have the ability to, to chart their music out for them. Uh, but yeah, I didn't do that with this one because as you can, if you listen to it, uh, there's not much to it. It's a very simple, pretty simple song. Um, so I'm just kind of going off of memory on this one. Uh, uh, Fletch says, I prefer the first intro riff you did. Nailed it in one. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right. Um, so let's see. I'm going to use that riff again to get me into this next section. <laughs> Okay, now here's something I want to be careful of, because the, oh, sorry, I'm going to bring it back up here. Here's something I need to be careful of, is the pop musician in me, I grew up, not grew up, but um, the majority of my career is playing pop music, pop country, perfect music, and Zeppelin is definitely not perfect, <laughs> right? There's a, there's a sloppiness, a looseness to it, so if I go with what my gut's saying, which is lining up with the kick patterns in all of these, check this out. You can see how the drums are going boom, boom, ga, da, boom, boom. They're always putting those two kicks in there while the guitar is going ba, ba, not ba, ba, ba. So, again, the, the, the perfection that I'm seeking in pop music would say, well, line with the kick drum and the guitar needs to change to match us. But again, this is rock and roll, so it should be a little off, I guess. I, if this was pop music, I would tell the drummer, follow the guitar. Or I would tell the guitarist, <laughs> follow the drums, you know. Um, sorry, I, I keep forgetting. I think you guys aren't, aren't looking at me. Um, whoops. I've got the wrong screens pulled up. Um, but anyways, because this is rock and roll, I'm going to allow it to be a little loose in this section. Let's try that again. <laughs> And right there, the guitar is also doing this. If I do that, it's just gonna sound metal. I mean, it sounds like a Rage Against the Machine kind of thing at that point. And this is not hats off to Tim Comerford or, hey, who's the guitar snap band? Tom Morello, this is uh, Jimmy Page. So uh, I'm gonna simplify that a little bit. All right, so I'm going to play from here out to the end, and then I'll probably track it because I'm about good to go on this one. Okay, now I need to get to this section, which is a bit more chaotic. Remember that it had all these uh, these tags at the end, and so I'm just gonna do a very simple. It's a pretty common like rock and roll uh, guitar sound. Just going off of a pentatonic, and I hate doing this kind of stuff because <laughs> I know what my pinky looks like. Uh, this finger right here. I always tell people. Like, look at that pinky. Get it over here because you might want to use it. But, you know, hey, it's rock and roll. <laughs> I can't really help it. Um, so, yeah, let me just play through that outro one more time. And uh, let's, let's make sure I got it. You 
know, one thing I could do is like, uh, ah, I don't know. I think I'm gonna keep it simple. Yeah, I think that's more appropriate. So, um, all right, cool. Uh, I'm gonna track this now. But before I do that, I should actually probably tune. <laughs> Uh, any questions? Anything you guys want to know um, about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it? There's a little bit of a delay between us in case you guys haven't noticed. So if I ask a question and then I wait a few seconds, it's literally because I don't know if you guys are still there. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah, let's make sure. Yep, yeah, everyone's here. Mark, welcome, man. How's it going? Oh, Nikita, thank you so very much. I really appreciate that. Um, sorry, hold on. I, I can't, apparently I can't tune and think and talk at the same time. Um, I, I, I really think that, you know, it's our job as a bass player, especially on a song like this, you know, to like listen through and um, clearly the drums have been recorded already, so I don't get to kind of have that conversation. And the guitar is is orchestrated already. Like, you can tell the parts are there. It's even been doubled. So not much is going to change. And so I've got to, like, as a bass player, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's a, it's a, there's only three instruments in here. And I don't want to walk over what the other guys are doing. And plus, the song's called Hats Off to Jimmy Page. And so the guitar part's kind of got to be the most featured part. And it's, it's, it's a balancing act of like, I want to do something cool, but I also want to do something uh, um, supportive. And that's the most important thing is just not stepping on anyone else. Um, and that's a hard thing to do uh, when you could do anything at all. You know, again, this is music and they didn't tell me, okay, play these notes. Here's the sheet music. They're like, here's what the song's called. Yeah, you know how Zeppelin goes, you know, make something good. When when those are your instructions, uh, yeah, it, it it's tough. Um, so so thank you very much, uh, Nikita. I, I appreciate that. Um, ben says the tone is perfect for this one. I told you that's why this bass was my choice. And uh, this is like honestly the fifth time I've ever gotten to use this bass. It goes with me to every session, and I love playing it. But it's just it's usually the wrong sound. Um, but in this case happens to be the right one. You're correct. Uh, Old School says, are there any drum machines with rhythm guitar integrated to play along with? Uh, not on this track. Um, this is just two acoustic guitars that have been hard panned, as far as I can tell, and then drum kit. Kenneth, welcome. Hello. Good to have you here. All right, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to record this song, basically. I'll probably do like two or three different passes, however long it takes me to get it right. Let's see if I remember this bad boy. Uh, okay, give me just one second, guys. Here we go.
Um, there's one take. The next thing I'm going to do, this is very, very important. I'm going to hit the save button. <laughs> and I'm going to create another uh, layer, which in Studio One. By the way, this is the uh, software that I'm using. This is Studio One by Personas. Uh, so I know it looks like my bass just went away. It didn't. There's the first take. And in fact, um, sorry, give me one second here. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to do something here where I go. Ex Normally, I have hotkeys for all this, but uh, I didn't do it. Okay, expand layers. Uh, so this first one I'm going to call take one so we don't get confused. Um, and I could just easily switch takes, you know. We'll call this one take two. And what the heck? Let's add another one just in case. And we'll call this one take three. So now uh, when I go to export these, I'll have take one, which is synced up to the video. I'll have take two, which I'm about to do now. And if I need one, I'll have a, a third take just so you know the artist has uh, all those different ones to choose uh, from. So here we go. This is take two. And actually, you know what? There's something I forgot to do. Um, normally, you wouldn't do this when you're recording. But as soon as you start syncing up audio with video, one thing that you have to do is you have to give yourself um, some sort of, uh, you, you, you see people do this in the movies, they have this thing and they go, right? That slates, it's, it's called a slate, so that we can take the audio and the video and line them up perfectly on top of each other. That last take, there's nothing to slate with because uh, these speakers aren't on. So these cameras aren't picking up any audio really other than that right there. So because this is a video, I'm gonna go like this. As soon as I start recording, and I'm gonna erase it. <laughs> it will not make its way into the song, but I'm gonna do it right up top so that uh, we can line it up in the video later. So if they choose take one, which is the last one I just did, they're gonna have some problems lining up the video. It'll just take them a minute. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> And uh, you know what? I'm going to call that it. I think uh, between those two different takes, uh, I think we got it. I, I don't think I need a third one, and uh, I don't think there's anything uh, else that it needs. Um, and, and here's another thing that I want to point out. When you're doing um, like a take one and a take two, I think it's important not to make them, oh, sorry, uh, not to make them completely perfectly identical. Sorry, I've got an itch on my nose. Uh, it's important not to do the same exact take twice. Because why would you do that? If we've already got the one idea, why do I need uh, the exact same thing? If it's, if it's a better execution, well, just give me that one and throw away the other take. <laughs> you know what I mean? So even though those sounded, Bill says, I like take two number best. I, I like take two also, Bill. Um, so they, they, they were, like, the roadmap was the same, but the fills were a little bit different. Um, uh, <clears throat> Remember on the on the first take when I was uh, talking about how oh I don't want to sync up with the kick pattern 
every single time because then, you know, it's too pop. I did a little bit more of that in this second take. Not every time, so it's still rock and roll, um, but I didn't do that in the first take, whereas I did in the second. So, I mean, these are just kind of things. They're very, very small, uh, little tiny changes, but that's what being a good bass player means. Um, if I can come back to, uh, it already disappeared, um, but um, who was it? Somebody just complimented and said, hey, uh, great playing. I think that's the key to being a good bassist is, um, is the nuances, the little things. Oh, I did the double kick in this one. I didn't do the double kick in that one. That's enough. I mean, that little tiny difference is enough. And you do that 10 or 15 different times all the way through the course of the song. And, and th that's what makes the, makes the track come to life. So I, I think that's definitely important um, as, as a basis. I'm going to get to some of these questions really quick. And then I'm going to process this using some plugins. And I'll, I'll go over any of that stuff. Um, and if you guys have any questions about it, uh, please... Um, Ask away. Uh, Matt says, would you test a P bass, P a P bass on the track to hear the difference? Um, honestly, no. Just because I know what a P bass sounds like, that's, uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, do I need to, if I was reading a line, do I need to hear my wife read it to, to hear what she would sound like? No, I just know. <laughs> I know what she would sound like reading a sentence. I, I can just picture it already because I know her really, really well. And the P bass is just like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to hear that one. I already know what it sounds like. I wanted to hear this one. And I was like, oh yeah, that's the one. In my opinion, the precision bass, I'm going to get rocks thrown at me for this one, but the P bass and the J bass also are like the most flavorless instruments and that's the reason why we like them the most they work every time it's going to work that's why we like them this bass is not going to work every time it's a character bass it's a wild card most of the time you don't want it but when it works it works and in this case it does so a p bass um if i had only one instrument it would be the p or the j and i already know that they're going to work just fine because again they don't have a lot of character they just sound like a bass is supposed to sound if that makes any sense um, uh, let me come back. Hold on, let me, uh, I missed some of these. Da, 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 da. Okay, we asked about the P-Base. Go Fletch says, not a great take in my opinion. Yeah, well, you can't win them all. Candace says, running anything on the pedal board because that's a sweet sounding bass. Honestly, no. No, there are no pedals. I'm going uh, direct into Studio One and I've got a couple of plugins right here. Uh, I'm running into um, this virtual mix rack by Stephen Slate. So it's a 1073 EQ into an 1176 compressor, which this is where the mojo is coming from. If, if you want to hear the difference. Sorry, hold on. Uh, all right, so check this out. I'm going to turn the compressor off. So just EQ. Compressor. Now, yes, it is also louder, so, I mean, it's going to sound better just because there's more volume. Whoops, where am I going? Um, but it definitely has like that. It's get, the notes are getting kicked back. You can hear the kind of sucking sound, and that's perfect for, for this style of music, and especially in the 60s. I mean, that's just the reason why Jamerson's lines pop. Boom, 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 boom. Um, That's all the compressor giving you that kind of sound. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what I'm processing. No pedals in this case. Space is too big. I can't sit it on my lap. <laughs> it has to go in the stand. Um, let's see. Hafiz says, uh, time recording bass. You use a compressor or direct? Yeah. So I'm just coming uh, straight into a DI. It's back there somewhere in another room, actually. Um, Fletch says, nailed it. That was a better take. Thank you so much. I appreciate that one. Uh, Jared says, uh, it sounds great, very tasteful on a song that could easily be overplayed because it's all one chord. And honestly, that made it even harder. Um, it was all like just an E minor jam. And so if I played all the things the guitar was doing, well, now it sounds like metal. I, I demonstrated that. Boom, brown, 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 brown. Like that's something you would hear on a Metallica song or a Rage Against the Machine song. Um, and yeah, if I play too 
busy or too pentatonic -y. it could could have become blues or if i went more and really you know played in line with the um, with the kick drum now it's country <laughs> and this song is not any of those it's kind of all of them it's zeppelin you know so that's the tricky part uh russell says di amp modeler or straight in no effects yeah so uh sorry i keep saying this um but yes it is bass straight into a di and then i'm processing it with plugins and to be honest um let's do this i'm gonna turn this off so now what we hear is my recorded bass <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yeah, I just wanna make sure you guys were still hearing that. So um, at this point, one thing that I might start to do, um, actually, let me do this. Let me unexpand these layers. I'm gonna duplicate this track, and here's the reason why if you guys, oh wait, that wasn't correct. Ah, you're not even seeing what I'm doing. Okay, <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm new to this. Uh, uh, duplicate the complete track. All right, so here's the reason why I keep reiterating the fact that I'm just playing straight. Uh, I'm going bass directly in with a DI, no pedals, no nothing, and then I'm doing everything with plugins. And the reason why is because of what you just saw. I here here's my bass track, and I duplicated the whole entire thing. So we've got identical performances and I can take all of these plugins off now right and so we'll call this base di which to be honest at this point in time that's mostly what they were doing they weren't miking amps I don't really think um, and we'll call this one base amp and so now what I can do is I can put a base amp simulator on here my favorite one okay so universal audio makes unreal plugins and two of them two of my favorites are this uh ampeg b15 model that they have and also dude this one right here the svt these are unreal plugins um i'm gonna mute the di so now we're just listening to the bass amp oh sorry that's both of them on we don't want both i can tell you probably the b15 is going to be the one the, the one that i go with but just watch this. I'm gonna just kind of go through some presets. Actually, wait, I have one that's my favorite. to come back to this is the reason why i just record as clean and as dry as possible so later on in post i can go back and start messing with them using plugins and the plugins sound great these days it used to be the case that analog sounded better than digital not anymore i will die on that hill i will fight you to the death the digital stuff sounds so good these days even if it's only 80 or 90 percent of the way there look at this <laughs> this is an svt sound that i paid all of 50 dollars for <laughs> <laughs> not three thousand dollars for and i can take it with me anywhere it's not it's not a thousand pounds uh but like i said probably we're gonna go with the b15 sound on this one and i'm also gonna put another 1176 on it oh wait this is the wrong one this is the legacy version Let me uh, kind of go between these two different sounds. Um, let me pull this guy back up. And so check this out. Uh, when I pull this fader down, it is just the bass amp. 
And when I pull this fader up, it'll be just the bass DI. Um, so you can kind of hear what the two sound like. So here's DI only, and I'm gonna pull the track down a little bit so you mostly hear the bass. Okay, so there's the DI. Here's the amp. So now the DI just sounds like doo-doo. <laughs> I, thought, I thought the DI track sounded great, but in comparison, um, you know, again, I'll pull the track out. And there's the amp. So that's definitely the one I'm going with. <laughs> that sounds so freaking good. Uh, but anyway, so that's the reason why I love plugins, because um, you can just you, you can change stuff after the fact. Um, whereas if I committed to running into a compressor um, and some overdrive and actually mic'd up an amp, well, the sound you get is you're, you're stuck with it. And there's nothing wrong with that if you can capture a good sound. And the problem is most people are not audio engineers, and um, don't have the ability to capture a great sound because maybe they don't have a great sounding room. This room is is getting there, but um, and I'm, I'm not <laughs> I'm not satisfied with the sound of it just yet. Um, so put on a set of headphones and just tweak away with plugins. Um, that's definitely the way to go. Uh, Jared says thanks for taking us through the process and explaining things. New member of the Basis.net and first live stream. Jared, welcome. Speaking of the Basis.net. Um, if you guys are curious, that is my um, uh, uh, online bass lessons website. It's like Netflix, but for bass lessons, there's like well over a thousand. It's ridiculous. I've been building it for years. Uh, so there's a curriculum there called the Basis Curriculum, which takes you from I just bought a bass all the way up to I can read music. I know all my notes, all my scales, arpeggios, and all that stuff. Um, and then obviously there's extracurricular lessons, which you've definitely seen here at my YouTube channel. Uh, slap tutorials, finger tapping, soloing, all, all that kind of stuff. And also, you know, uh, while we're talking about it, it's a good idea to check out The Bassist Podcast. Just pull out your smartphone and type in The Bassist Podcast. Uh, the, last week, um, or sorry, yesterday, an episode just went live with Norm Stockton. He's one of my favorite bassists of all time. I've got Stu Ham coming up. Um, Kai Whaleman, uh, well, Whaleman, sorry, or Wallman. Dang it. I forgot how to pronounce his last name. He's playing bass with Katy Perry and, and uh, Kelly Clarkson right now. I was, uh, went and hung with him in LA last week, um, so I've got him on the podcast coming up pretty soon. So anyways, um, that's just something that I've been doing for a long time, and I absolutely love it. It's my, my favorite thing of all the things I do between the YouTube channel and the bassist.net, my podcast is, um, that's my favorite. Um, Jason says, great episode, apparently. <laughs> apparently he's seen that one. Ah... Uh, Bass Players Anonymous says, my segues are on point. Well, you know, I do what I can. Um, hey, if you guys have any other questions, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Ask away. Uh, otherwise, um, Ricardo, hello. Welcome. You're a little late because we're about to end, but don't worry. Um, I think in a couple of minutes, you're going to be able to, to rewatch it. I'm pretty sure YouTube makes them available like five, ten minutes later. Um, Jonathan Cage? Jonathan? John, John in Fiction? John in Fiction. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, you'll be able to rewatch it. Uh, but I, I don't have to leave now, so if you guys have any questions about what I've been doing, please ask away, or any other questions in general about gear, uh, music theory, practice, I don't know, anything at all, um, feel free to ask away. Let me, let me just make sure I got everything. Uh, oh, last thing to do, this is very, very important. I'm not kidding, I can't tell you how many times I didn't do this, all right? Most important, I'm going to save <laughs> the session because power goes out and things happen and uh, it's, a, it's a pain in the butt when you lose everything. So um, anyways, yeah, so now I've got my base DI. Um, as you can see, I've got two different takes on it. Let's delete that third one. Don't even, don't even, actually, I don't know how to delete it. 
Oh, geez. What just happened? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, I deleted the whole track. That's not what I wanted to do. All right, let's get back. Um, well, this is going well. Hey, let's come back over to this screen. So any questions at all? Nope, none. So thank you so much, guys, for tuning in today. And also a very, very special thank you to GHS Strings for making this live stream possible. Go ahead and check them out at ghsstrings.com. Tell them that Jamie sent you. I don't know what my computer is doing. It's freaking out. <laughs> but seriously, thank you so much for tuning in today. I really, really appreciate um, you guys swinging by and, and, and hanging out. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so yet, check out thebasis.net. Tons of bass lessons, like I said, and, and lots of live streams and things just like this. And also check out the Basis podcast. New episodes go live each and every week. And until next time, I'll see you guys again next time here at thebassist.net. Adios, amigos, and 